We've got three Saturday games this week's NFL betting slate, and I have one pick for each game. Of course, all three of these plays are going to be a plus money banger. So that's what I'm going to give you today. My NFL player prop best bets specifically for Saturday's NFL betting slate. We're talking Saturday, December 16th. Before I can get into my three picks for tomorrow, I do need to do a recap from how Thursday night football went, which luckily was awesome. I gave out two picks for that gross Thursday night football game. We got both of those picks to cash. Backing Easton Stick passing it came through for us as I had him over 31 and a half passing attempts and I had him over 190 and a half uh, passing yards. Both of those plays cashed. We end the day two and two up two units. That brings our total profit season to date up to 21.44 units of profit with an ROI just under 15% at 14.94%. Hopefully we can continue this hot streak for Saturday's games. If you're not already, please remember to like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and then comment. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you like my plays, if you hate them, if there are plays that you like for Saturday, that's all fine. Put that in the comments and let's get into it. So play number one, this is in the Broncos versus Lions game. We're taking Sam Laporta Anytime touchdown, plus 180 odds at Caesars. I will say you can get this at plus 188 if you use BetSafe, but since that book isn't readily, widely available, I'm just going to stick with the Caesars number where everybody can lock it in. But I really do like this play. Now, I'll admit it hasn't been pretty the past couple games for the Lions and for their passing attack, attack. But I think in general, the Lions get it going on Saturday, and I like backing Sam Laporta specifically. Now, I'll admit... I was debating between receptions, touchdown yards. I wasn't sure which way I wanted to go when I was first re researching this play. But in general, Laporta hasn't really shown a massive ceiling to blow his props out of the water. Like his pumped up props, there aren't a ton of value on those. So I instead decided to back him to score. And at plus 180 odds, the value is pretty good. I will say I do like both his receptions and yards at their main line. So if you want to take those... I think those are good plays. I'm only going to track whether he scores a touchdown or not. But just to give you guys some advice, I do like his receptions and yards. Looking at the matchup here, even as the Broncos defense has gotten better since that 70-point debacle against the Dolphins, there's one area that they have continued to struggle with even as their defense has gotten better, and that's guarding tight ends. Now, that's the case with how these defenses go for Vance Joseph, the defensive coordinator for the Broncos. Anywhere Vance Joseph, Vance Joseph has been, his defenses have struggled against tight ends. That's as a head coach, that's as a defensive coordinator, anywhere. That's just a pattern with Vance Joseph. According to DVOA, they're the third worst defense in the NFL at guarding tight ends. Um, they also allow the second most fantasy points per game, specifically to tight ends as well. If you like fantasy metrics, three tight ends have gone over their reception total in a row. Four of the last five have gone over their yards. So I really do like Sam Laporta to have a good game as he's having a pretty good rookie season for the Lions. Hopefully we can get him get him to get into the end zone and cash our first play. Next up in the Steelers versus Colts game, we're taking Najee Harris, 70 plus rushing yards, plus 230 odds at Bet Rivers. This is another really, really good price that we are getting. For context, Caesars is offering us 75 plus rushing yards at plus 210 odds. So we're getting five fewer hard yards and we're getting 20 cents of juice better by taking this on Bet Rivers. Again, another matchup play. The Colts rushing defense has been a train wreck all year. They allow 110 rushing yards per game on the entire season. But as the year has gone on, they've actually gotten worse at defending the run. Since week 10, that number is up to 133 and a half rushing yards per game. That is the third most in the NFL in that span, again, since week 10. On the entire year, they're allowing the fifth most. In the last couple weeks, they're allowing the third most. Now, since the Steelers have fired Matt Canada with the new offensive coordinator in town, the coaching staff has opted to give more work to Najee Harris as opposed to splitting it with Jalen Warren. There was a period of time where we thought it was going to be a 50-50 split in the work between Jalen and Najee. That hasn't been the case for the past couple weeks. On the year, Najee Harris has gotten at least 12 carries in every single game except for one. He's had double digits in every game except for one. And in the past three weeks, that includes 15 carries, 16 carries, and then 12 last week. Looking at Jalen Warren, he's only had double digit rushing attempts in three games this year, and his attempts have gone down the past three weeks. Three weeks ago, he had 13, then he had nine. Last week, he had seven. Now, 
I will admit Najee isn't always super efficient with his, with his carries. He's not one of those running backs that can break off a ton of yards and have a high yards per carry, but at least he's been much better recently than he was at the beginning of the year. On the year, he's cleared 70 or more rushing yards three times, two of, <clears throat> excuse me, two of which have happened in the past five games, while he's getting at least six rushing yards in four of the last six games, some of them on much worse matchups than we are having in this game against the Colts. So he should continue to be fed the ball. He should have a decent amount of success doing so, hopefully getting us to 70 plus rushing yards, cashing this plus 230 banger. Last up, third and final pick of the slate in the Bengals versus Vikings game. We're taking TJ Hawkinson, anytime touchdown, plus 220 odds at FanDuel. So our last pick of the slate, backing another tight end to have a good game this time with tj hawkinson getting <clears throat> getting him at pretty juicy odds at plus 220 it's also a really good price compared to the market no other book even has this at plus 200 or above and we are getting it at plus 220. so with, with our first play i talked about how bad the broncos are at defending the tight end well guess who is actually worse than the broncos in pretty much every single metric that's right that would be the cincinnati Bengals defense and how well, or in this case, how poorly they guard the tight end. According to DVOA, the Bengals are the second worst defense in the, in the NFL, specifically at guarding the tight end. And they actually give up the most fantasy points per game to tight ends. So if you're a fantasy person, target your tight ends against the Bengals. The Bengals allow the mo both the most receptions and yards to tight ends while giving up a lot of touchdowns as well. Five of the last six tight ends have gone over their receiving yardage, over under four of the last six have gone over their receptions as well. This is another situation where I like both Hawkinson receptions and yards at their main line. Again, another situation that I didn't feel super comfortable pumping it up because you just really don't know how the offense is going to look with Nick Mullins starting at quarterback. Now, I do think that he is going to be a passing improvement than Josh Dobbs, especially the past couple of weeks. Josh Dobbs, his luck really has run out. So I do think Hawkinson is going to have a good game. And I think that the Vikings passing offense should be better. On the year, Hawkinson has five touchdowns. And for the past six games, he scored a touchdown in every other game. He went no, yes, no, yes, no. The past six games, since he missed it last game, that means he's going to hit in this one. That's exactly how math works if these trends continue. Jokes aside, I do think Hawkinson is going to have a very good game on Saturday. I wouldn't hate a parlay of Laporta and Hawkinson if you want to do touchdown, receptions, yards, all sticks. I think they're both going to have good games, obviously. Hopefully, we can get Hawkinson to cash. And that's how we got three picks, three plus money bangers for you guys to lock in for Sunday's slate. If we can get any of the plus 200 or above bangers to cash, we will at least be profitable. If we can get all three, we will be rich. So let's hope for that. And that's all I got. Appreciate everybody for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff and have a good one.